Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the African Nightcrawlers in the Vermi Bag Little Mammoth. All right, so I'm still not using this uh, ventilation panel. It doesn't seem to need it at this point. Uh, being that this is inside my house, I don't know if it ever will. All right, so here's the cover that I've been keeping on it. Seems to be doing a good job. Uh, the worms are sticking to it a little bit. But I'll just fold that up and they should be okay until I come back and get them again. I have a little tray underneath they can sit with. All right, now looking at these guys, the one thing that you do notice when I'm rummaging around in here is that they don't tend to run away from the light as much as the red wigglers, European nightcrawlers, and blue worms. I have no idea why, but that is one of their traits where if you're wondering after three or four years and they're very small worms like mine are right now, I mean, they definitely look smaller like a blue worm. But they are actually uh, still the African nightcrawlers. Um, they just uh, live to whatever means you give them. So if I fed them a bunch of grain, gave them a big area, bigger than this, then they would probably stay really big worms. But because really their job is to process all of my shredded paper, uh, then you know I don't need them to be that big. I am a little disappointed that they do shrink um, if you don't overfeed them, but um, I know some people are like, those are really small. I thought African nightcrawlers were huge. Well, they can be huge, uh, but they are not uh, you know, over generations over the last couple of years. Each successive generation gets smaller and smaller uh, in order to, I guess, adapt to its situation of where it's living. Um, so, in case you're wondering, that's what it is, and you can see they're just not running away from that light. They don't care. I, I don't know what native environment they live in that they can deal with that, but um, that's how these guys work. All right, let's take a look and see what we've got in here. So, looks like they haven't completely started in on that paper that I gave them last time. So let's look and see what they're doing with the food. Um, let's see. That piece of bark. Uh, stems, tea bag, avocado shell is always popular even for the African nightcrawlers. Got my Oh, this is <laughs> this is the pineapple after about a month. Doesn't even it's hardly recognizable. If I didn't know that was what was in there, I don't know. I would have probably thought it was I don't know, like a wad of paper or something. <clears throat> Looks like they have a little bit of that melon left. Castings are starting to look really great. Haven't really gotten into that uh, mango pit yet. Trying to find, oops, uh, trying to find what I fed them last. It's been a little over a week. Still working on the stems from the bonsais. So, a little bit of paper, but that's it. They've eaten all the meat off of that. So, we might not be finding any food in here. A little bit of pit there. Yep. Just the usual long term. Wait, I see kind of a ball here. A little worm ball, kind of, in the avocado shell. So, this is what happens to an avocado pit after, I don't know, five or six months. Weird, right? turns into like this brownish paste. 
Um, but the avocado, you know, this was probably a whole avocado. But yeah, that's the pit when it gets, uh, when they finally do their thing or the bacteria finally does its thing. Let's see. That one's still in progress. But just rummaging around, I'm not seeing any any food to speak of. Now these guys have been going continuously um, by themselves upstairs where it's nice and warm in the winter time. I tried to have them in the basement, but uh, it gets really cold in the basement in the winter time. Um, and uh, it's an old house, so I don't know if it's the lack of uh, insulation or what, but you know, it gets into the 40s and 50s uh, in my basement. So uh, these guys really did poorly in the basement, which is where I would prefer them to be. But uh, the health of my animals, you know, is more important to me than the fact that I have a, a vermi bag in my upstairs with a bunch of worms. Um, but yeah, they did poorly in the basement. I mean, I probably lost half of the, the population because it goes down into the 40s and 50s in the basement. I actually put a thermometer down there um, this winter just to see what the variation was because we get some very cold days here in central Illinois where the wind chill is, you know, minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so I think that affects the basement more than I ever knew. Uh, in case anybody wants, their, if their family ever says, hey, I'd like to grow an avocado tree, put, the, put it in a worm bin. I've had more luck growing avocado trees in a worm bin than I have ever had, you know, with the toothpicks and the shot glass and all that. I've got about, I don't know, six avocado trees. They live outside in the summer, um, but I think I'm going to incorporate the bedding from last time in here since they've done away with the, the former bedding and I mean it's still damp, but it may not be comfortable for them to crawl around on the top to eat it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix that in so that when we give them the food feeding this week, then they'll have lots of bedding to go with it. But I'm going to move over all of my left finding or my leftover findings and then kind of flip this over a little bit. I don't know, I think it helps if you put the old food that's not done yet below the food that you're feeding them. I think all the good juices get into it and make whatever the leftovers are may be more tasty. Maybe they've taken everything out of this stuff that they really want and there's is no reason for them to mess with it anymore. But if you uh, maybe put some food on top and uh, like gravy, like gravy for the worm food. So today they're going to get something they really like. Well, all worms really like melon. Um, so I better not. I'll take that and soak it and use it for a different bin. But what they do have is a bunch of cantaloupe and avocado uh, sh yeah. skin, shell, I'm not sure what you call it. So that's what they're going to get today. And then I'm going to cover the food up with the existing bedding. And then I'm going to go ahead and give them more bedding on top of this because I'm willing to bet when we come in next time, this bedding is going to be almost demolished. So if you're watching two videos in succession, make a comment below. Um, if you watched them together, uh, maybe you'll, you'll have a better idea than we will because I forgot to go look at it before. So let me go get them some more bedding for the top. Okay, so this is this prepared bedding that I've had waiting in the wings. It's been soaking for a month. I kind of do it like friendship bread. You know, I don't go all the way down to the bottom of the bucket that I've got it in. I've got it in a tote. Um, 
I don't let it go all the way down so I keep the the good bite microbes in there. In here it's a little bit wet on the bottom there, but that's okay. I think it can use the extra moisture. But give them some extra bedding to top them off. And I think we're getting ready for a, a I'm going to say June. I'm going to do my first um, harvest of this in June. Let me know what you think. How long does it take for one of the larger systems to come to equilibrium so where you can harvest it? Uh, I've been kind of waiting because this, you know, there's not a lot of people out there with these little mammoths. Um, I should go back and watch um, Vermi Bag channel and see what, how long he waited between. Uh, but he's in a much warmer environment than I am. But anyway, if you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up or in this case, paper thumb up. And if you're not a member of my warm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.